Top, absolut top. Ich liebe es. Wo, super. Ach, top ist das hier. Top. Wieder mal top. Ein Knaller nach dem anderen. Super, hammer geil. He laid in wait behind the farmer's shed, watching him work the field until the sun was fully set. He used to take entire lives at a time, sustaining on them, living on them. Under cover of night, two clawed hands reached out and yanked the man into the darkness. And after the blood-curdling screams, there was nothing but silence. He would suck time from people in the blink of an eye. Leaving them to wonder, where has all the time gone? Forward to the year 2018. A graying man stands up in front of his co-workers during his retirement party. He looks at his watch, an opulent piece of gold, a present from corporate for a job well done. Meanwhile, unbeknownst... <laughs> Eight hundred years ago, he used to hide in the shadows. He laid in wait behind the farmer's shed, watching him work the field until the sun was fully set. He used to take entire lives at a time, sustaining on them, living on them. Under cover of night, two clawed hands reached out and yanked the man into the darkness. And after the blood-curdling screams, there was nothing but silence. He would suck time from people in the blink of an eye, leaving them to wonder, where has all the time gone? Forward to the year 2018. A graying man stands up in front of his co-workers during his retirement party. He looks at his watch, an opulent piece of gold, a present from corporate for a job well done. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to him, a figure hovers just outside the office window. He still lives, but he's getting older, weaker. One year of a human's life used to get him six months. Now it gets him six minutes. He had to cast a wider net. From where it loomed outside the man's window, the lower office level stretched down to the ground like an endless column. The creature slowly drains life energy from the oblivious workers. It's never, never enough. Cal Peterson already knows a call was coming, and then the phone rang. And in that split second, Cal perks himself up and brings the phone to his ear. Hello, good morning, sir. This is Cal Peterson from OBL Insurance. May I interest you in... Uh, huh. Hmm. Okay, uh... It was the same exact words he said on every single call, as he had to read from a script, attempting to get them to purchase some life insurance. Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, we'll be in touch. Goodbye. He said before he closed yet another call. The fake smile fades from his face, and with a sigh, he stares off into the distance, lets his mind float. Uh... Is it five o'clock yet? Beyond Cal's cubicle are another row of cubicles, each with a person set in it, burning their energy away just like Cal. And beyond that row was yet another one full of the same people, an endless row of ringing phones. The drive home was going at a turtle's pace, and it didn't help Cal at all. Almost home. Several minutes and curse words later, Hey, honey, Cal says to Katrina, his wife. Hello, darling. How was your day? It was really, really boring. It's so draining. I have to put on this fake smile on my face because the caller can tell when you're not smiling. <laughs> Katrina always had a way of cheering him up. Don't worry too much, honey. It might not be like that forever. And for now, we can cook up some food together to cheer you up. Katrina's eyes widened as Cal jokingly began to sing the song on the radio word for word. Well, maybe give or take a word, which only made it that much more special to her. After eating, they retreated to the couch and snuggled up for a movie. 
It's getting late, Katrina said as the credits to the movie started to roll. It's not fair. I only get a few hours a day with you, he says. I know, I know. Come on, honey. Let's head off to bed. Cal turns back to the TV, enjoying the darkness on his tired eyes. He stands up and looks out the window. He sees other people in their houses, still eating or watching TV with their spouses. He breathes in deeply through his nose before he let out a sigh as he drifted off in thought. Why can't we have more of this and less of tiring work? The next morning, with a yawn, Cal lurches his way to the sight of his lovely wife having just finished making coffee and all dressed up for work. She always had an energy about her. She loved her job. Good morning, sleepyhead. Happy June, she says, grinning from ear to ear. June, that's weird. It was just March. Where did the time go? He replies with a chuckle. Well, gotta head off to work, Katrina said. Cal just can't help but smile, and even felt his grouchiness dissipate in her presence. However, it faded every single day she left for work, leaving him alone in the house as he prepared to get ready for work himself. Just when he was heading out, Cal couldn't help but look out the window again and see everyone else getting into their cars and going to work. What if I didn't go to work today? He thinks, pondering the notion of not going to work before he caved. And with another sigh, Cal opened the door and proceeded to his car, heading off for work. What if? Another day, another morning. Happy October, Katrina said. October? It was just June. Katrina's face scrunched up sadly. Time really does fly for you, doesn't it? She asked. Cal looked up at her with a mix of sadness and frustration. Yeah. And it went on and on. Happy January. Happy March. Happy June. And all he could do was smile despite the misery inside. I have got to do something about this, Cal said, as he watched Katrina driving off for work as always. Hey, Cal, make this short. I have an important meeting to attend to. You wanted to talk to me about something, said Cal's boss. His name is Mr. Keeper. A man who, in spite of his usual dismissive tone, was actually rather affable today. Uh, yes, Mr. Keeper. I need a week off, Cal said. My wife and I want to celebrate our anniversary with a cottage stay. Quaint and quiet, Cal added. Well, that should be all right. Tell Jerry to take your calls for now. Oh, and congratulations on another married year. Enjoy your time off, Mr. Keeper responded. After his shift... Cal's drive home felt like much longer than usual. The gridlock had him almost thinking about ditching his car. He eventually made it home in one piece. Finally! Jeez, that traffic was insane today! Well, you're home early, Katrina said, as she walked out of the bathroom to meet Cal in the hallway. How was your day? I asked for a week off. I need to spend some time alone. I'm gonna go up to the forest tomorrow. Get some fresh air. Katrina giggled at the notion at first before she realized Cal wasn't joking around. Wait, you're serious? Katrina says. It's not you, honey. Time is just passing by so fast. But I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Out there, I feel like at least I'll slow down, he says. Then I want you to go and rejuvenate, Katrina said, smiling at him. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too. Let's just relax tonight. I'll pack and leave first thing in the morning. The next morning, Cal excitedly packs his camping equipment, says goodbye to Katrina, and then heads out. He drove out to the National Park with all the supplies he would need for a couple of nights. Out in the woods, he put up a tent, and his mood slowly seemed to improve by the second. It was a bright, sunny day at the park. Cal started his day off by sitting around and laying still, watching the clouds go by. He fished for hours upon hours and made some of the best meals he's had in a while from his catch. He grabbed some pine needles off of a tree, crushed them in his hands, and smelled it. It smells amazing. The dark circles under his eyes fade over the days. For the first time in what seems like forever, he feels alive. It was another wonderful day at the National Park. 
Cal sat beside the fire while inspiration suddenly struck him. He scribbles on a piece of birch bark using a stick and the chunk of coal from the fire pit. All right, Cal, what's the game plan here? He says to himself. He drew a diagram of his life plan. Let's see. Time with Katrina. Time outside. Pay off loans. Enough money to live comfortably. Maybe support children someday. But most, most importantly, to live the rest of my life doing things I love to do. Cal smiles as he looked down at the scribbles he made and feels accomplished with it, smiling on his own for the first time since he could remember. His smile faded as he thought, how do I achieve all this? The next morning, Cal woke up in his tent feeling bittersweet, bummed to be leaving the campsite. But he was also excited to get back to Katrina and even felt like maybe work wouldn't be such a daily drag. The last day of blissful solitude. Cal turns from his side and onto his back, staring at his tent's roof, absent-minded. At least I get to see Katrina. Maybe we can catch and actually finish a full movie tonight. He started gathering some wood for the fire and headed back to the campsite. What he saw next gave him the chills. There was someone at his campsite. What the? As he got closer, he noticed the person saw his scribbles on the birch bark. Hey, what are you? Cal said cautiously. The stranger turned his head toward him. Cal's blood ran cold as he realized he was wearing a mask. Hello, is this yours? Said the stranger. Who are you? And what's with the mask? Someone who might be able to help, the masked man replied. Cal was starting to feel a bit uneasy and irritated, especially after seeing that the stranger had gone through his notes. Help with what, he says maintaining appearances all the while keeping his wits about him. Cal proceeded casually and squatted down to cook some fish at the fire. Want some fish? I got more than I can eat and I'll be leaving today. The stranger shook his head and remained quiet. Have you ever heard of Bitcoin, Cal? The stranger asked, breaking the silence out of the otherwise tranquil campsite. How do you know my name? Cal said, this time becoming all the more suspicious. The stranger remained silent. No, but look, I'm not interested in some scam, Cal continued. Not a scam, the stranger replies. Cal stared at him and slowly nodded his head back as he widened his eyes, sarcastically agreeing. Right, not a scam. There is more to Bitcoin than what people think, the stranger replies. Look, I'm not about to spend my precious free time with things like the stock market, Cal continues. He almost laughed as he said it, letting the stranger know he still wasn't buying it. The masked man just shrugged his shoulders. Then, what exactly are you spending your time in, Cal? The stranger asked. It seems to me that you like to be here with nature. You like the freedom. So tell me, can you quit your job? This annoyed Cal even more. Oh yeah, just up and quit my job, like it's so easy. Wait, who are you anyway? Cal, there's always a way. Fantastically agreeing. Right, not a scam. There is more to Bitcoin than what people think, the stranger replies. Look, I'm not about to spend my precious free time with things like the stock market, Cal continues. He almost laughed as he said it, letting the stranger know he still wasn't buying it. The masked man just shrugged his shoulders. Then, what exactly are you spending your time in, Cal? The stranger asked. It seems to me that you like to be here with nature. You like the freedom. So tell me, can you quit your job? This annoyed Cal even more. Oh yeah, just up and quit my job, like it's so easy. Wait, who are you anyway? Cal, there's always a way. I apologize for not introducing myself. You can call me Satoshi. Satoshi Nakamoto. There is great injustice going on every day in this world, Cal. People face it every day, yet they are too blind to see. The current system is designed for the benefit of a select few. 
How can regular people have any fighting chance when the playing field is nowhere near even? There is a reason why you, Cal, are alone, sitting here in the woods with a stranger wearing a mask. With the way the system is currently set up, if money equals the time we spend working, then those in control are stealing your time. Stealing your life. The stranger continued as Cal begins to feel less suspicious. But there is a way. A way to give back to the people. Those who really need it the most. A way to even the playing field. I call it... Bitcoin. Wait, Cal said. You're telling me you invented Bitcoin? Yes, Satoshi replied. And that's not all. If you're interested, read this. My number is on the back. Contact me if you're looking for a different type of job, Satoshi said as he held out a stack of paper in front of Cal. But I thought the whole point was to get out of the 9 to 5. Who said it's a 9 to 5? Satoshi replied with a chuckle. <laughs> You'll know when you call me. This knowledge has an effect on people. Cal's eyes squinted as he held the stack of paper. It was titled... Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Cal remained silent, staring at Satoshi as he wandered off and disappeared into the dark before he looked back down at the papers handed to him. Under the light of the bonfire, he began to read. Cal went home and kept the Bitcoin white paper near him. He didn't understand it at first. In fact, he got more confused. But it led him to research the topic and question his current finances in general. But the more he learned about finance, the more he didn't know. It was a rabbit hole. 
When he wasn't on a call, he was reading, making his days fly by. But this time, in a completely different way. Even the drive to and from work became much less stressful with all the new information he's learning. Man, these finance podcasts are amazing. Makes time spent during traffic not seem so bad. Whoa, I've never had this much before. Cal thought as he checked his account on his smartphone. $12,000. For a moment, he thinks, maybe I should call Satoshi. Nah, not yet. What am I going to tell him? Thanks for inspiring me. Now I have more money. Thanks. Nah, I've got to wait until I have something bigger to show. Cal continues to learn about financial freedom every single day. Jeez, why do they have to use these complicated finance lingos? But it's actually pretty simple once you get some key concepts. So why make things so complicated for everyone? He thinks to himself. Student loans became his next target to strike with the money he was saving and investing. Wow, I even managed to pay off my student loans, he said to himself after a year of consistency and making his final payment. And I could actually take Katrina out every once in a while. His life was getting better by the day, but he couldn't figure out the words to tell Satoshi. Another year passes by. Unlike then, Cal and Katrina decided to have dinner at a restaurant tonight. It's been exactly one year since we paid off all our debt. But let's not get used to this, Katrina says. I told you we didn't have to go out. I would have just as loved spending time at home with you. Plus it's free. I know, I know, don't worry. I'm keeping count. This is only the second time we went out to a place like this for the past year. But you've got to admit, we have to celebrate paying off the house. Can you believe it? The couple went back home after dinner, their bellies and spirits full. Man, I'm stuffed, Cal says. Let's put on something more comfy, Katrina replies as she heads back to their bedroom. Cal pauses for a moment and stares at his phone. I think it's time to call Satoshi. Cal sits on their sofa and dials Satoshi's number. There's an air of excitement and gratitude about him as he puts his phone to his ear. Then a voice all too familiar with Cal. Hello. Hi, Satoshi. It's Cal. You told me I'd no one to call you. We met at the- In the woods. Yeah, I remember. How's it going? Cal can't help but smile as he spoke to Satoshi. I just wanted to thank you. You've inspired me after you gave me that white paper. Ever since then, I went down the rabbit hole of finance, paid off our loans, got into investing, and even paid off our house. Happened today. That's great, Cal. Step one complete. Now get ready for step two. That's when things get interesting, said Satoshi, just before he abruptly cut the call short. Well, that was fast, Katrina says. Yeah, he just said things will get interesting and then hung up. But things are already interesting. Well, he is a little weird. Cal and Katrina were able to just kick back and relax. At least Katrina and I have more time together. Finally. Katrina was so happy that Cal had been getting into personal finance, and he had been teaching her, too. Does time still fly? Katrina asked as they sat on the couch. Yeah, but now it's because I've been enjoying myself. Yet I still think I need to quit my job and focus on investing in this Bitcoin thing full time. I agree. I can already see the effects. Katrina said as Cal rubbed his eyes and yawned, prompting Katrina to stand up. Let's head to bed, honey. It's getting late. I'll be right there. Let me turn this off. Cal reached for the remote to turn off the TV, but before his fingers even touched the remote, a small spark flew from the tip of his finger into the power button, shutting the television off.
forward to the year 2018. A graying man stands up in front of his co-workers during his retirement party. He looks at his watch, an opulent piece of gold, a present from corporate for a job well done. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to him, a figure hovers just outside the office window. He still lives, but he's getting older, weaker. One year of a human's life used to get him six months. Now it gets him six minutes. He had to cast... Cal sat there for a moment, staring at his hand in the remote. Interest you in... Uh, head to bed, honey. It's getting late. I'll be right there. Okay. Let me turn this off. Cal reached for the remote to turn off the TV. But home several minutes and curse words later hey honey Cal says to Katrina his wife hello darling how was your day it was really really boring it's so draining I have to put on this fake smile on my face because the caller can tell when you're not smiling <laughs> Katrina always had a way of cheering him up don't worry too much honey it might not be like that forever. And for now, we can cook up some food together to cheer you up. Katrina's eyes widened as Cal jokingly began to sing the song on the radio word for word. Well, maybe give or take a word, which only made it that much more special to her. After eating, they retreated to the couch and snuggled up for a movie. It's getting late, Katrina said as the credits to the movie started to roll. It's not fair. I only get a few hours a day with you. He says, I know, I know. Come on, honey, head off to bed. Cal turns back to the TV, enjoying the darkness on his tired eyes. He stands up and looks out the window. He sees other people in their house. Before his fingers even touched the remote, a small spark flew from the tip of his finger into the power button, shutting the television off. Cal sat there for a moment, staring at his hand and the remote. What the? Did the TV turn off by itself? I must be really tired in imagining things. The next day, Cal enters the elevator at work. He wanted to speak to his boss, but was instructed earlier that his boss moved to a different floor. 
He's a bit confused when he reaches it. That's weird. Did my boss switch his office last week or something? He thought. Outside the elevator, Cal walked up to the large double doors and knocked, before the door opened seemingly on its own. A secretary appeared from behind it. How may I help you, Mr. Peterson? Hi, I came to see Mr. Keeper. Is his office here now? Do you have an appointment? No, but... Let Mr. Peterson in, a voice said. As Cal got a glimpse of the man, he tried his best to keep any expression from appearing on his face despite being shocked at the sight in front of him. A man who, in spite of his usual dismissive tone, was actually rather affable today. Uh, yes, Mr. Keeper. I need a week off, Cal said. My wife and I want to celebrate our anniversary with a cottage stay. Quaint and quiet, Cal added. Well, that should be all right. Tell Jerry to take your calls for now. Oh, and congratulations on another married year. Enjoy your time off, Mr. Keeper responded. After his shift, Cal's drive home felt like much longer than usual. The gridlock had him almost thinking about ditching his car. He eventually made it home in one piece. Finally. Jeez, that traffic was insane today. Well, you're home early, Katrina said, as she walked out of the bathroom to meet Cal in the hallway. How was your day? I asked for a week off. I need to spend some time alone. I'm going to go up to the forest tomorrow, get some fresh air. Katrina giggled at the notion at first, but looking around. Wait, you're serious? Katrina says. It's not you, honey. Time is just passing by so fast. But I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. Out there, I feel like at least I'll slow down, he says. Then I want you to go and rejuvenate, Katrina said, smiling at him. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too. Let's just relax tonight. I'll pack and leave first thing in the morning. The next morning, Cal excitedly packs his camping equipment, says goodbye to Katrina, and then heads out. He drove out to the National Park with all the supplies he would need for a couple of nights. Out in the woods, he put up a tent, and his mood slowly seemed to improve by the second. It was a bright, sunny day at the park. Cal started his day off by sitting around and laying still, watching the clouds go by. He fished for hours upon hours, and made some of the best meals he's had in a while from his catch. He grabbed some pine needles off of a tree, crushed them in his hand, and smelled it. It smells amazing. The dark circles under his eyes fade over the days. For the first time in what seems like forever, he feels alive. It was another wonderful day at the National Park. Cal sat beside the fire while inspiration suddenly struck him. He scribbles on a piece of birch bark using a stick and the chunk of coal from the fire pit. All right, Cal, what's the game plan here? He says to himself. He drew a diagram of his life plan. Let's see. Time with Katrina, time outside, pay off loans, enough money to live comfortably, maybe support children someday, but most, most importantly to live the rest of my life doing things I love to do. Cal smiles as he looks down at the scribbles he made and feels accomplished with it, smiling on his own for the first time since he could remember. His smile faded as he thought, how do I achieve all this? The next morning, Cal woke up in his tent feeling bittersweet, bummed to be leaving the campsite. But he was also excited to get back to Katrina, and even felt like maybe work wouldn't be such a daily drag. The last day of blissful solitude. Cal turns from his side and onto his back, staring at his tent's roof, absent-minded. At least I get to see Katrina. Maybe we can catch and actually finish a full movie tonight. He started gathering some wood for the fire and headed back to the campsite. What he saw next gave him the chills. There was someone at his campsite. What the? As he got closer, he noticed the person saw his scribbles on the birch bark. Hey, what are you? Cal said cautiously. The stranger turned his head toward him. Cal's blood ran cold as he realized he was wearing a mask. Hello, is this yours? Said the stranger. Who are you? And what's with the mask? Someone who might be able to help, the masked man replied. Cal was starting to feel a bit uneasy and irritated, especially after seeing that the stranger had gone through his notes. Help with what? He says. 
maintaining appearances all the while keeping his wits about him. Cal proceeded casually and squatted down to cook some fish at the fire. You want some fish? I've got more than I can eat and I'll be leaving today. The stranger shook his head and remained quiet. Have you ever heard of Bitcoin, Cal? The stranger asked, breaking the silence out of the otherwise tranquil campsite. How do you know my name? Cal said, this time becoming all the more suspicious. The stranger remained silent. No, but look, I'm not interested in some scam, Cal continued. Not a scam, the stranger replies. Cal stared at him and slowly nodded his head back as he widened his eyes, sarcastically agreeing. Right, not a scam. There is more to Bitcoin than what people think, the stranger replied. Look, I'm not about to spend my precious free time with things like the stock market, Cal continues. He almost laughed as he said it, letting the stranger know he still wasn't buying it. The masked man just shrugged his shoulders. Then, what exactly are you spending your time in, Cal? The stranger asked. It seems to me that you like to be here with nature. You like the freedom. So tell me, can you quit your job? This annoyed Cal even more. Oh, yeah, just up and quit my job. Like it's so easy. Wait, who are you anyway? Cal, there's always a way. I apologize for not introducing myself. You can call me Satoshi.
right. This job I mentioned. Would you be willing to find and fight evil, like the Time Stealer, with me? Ha! <laughs> I see what you meant, man. Five job, Cal replied. Indeed, the opposite. Shh! Whoa. Is that my... Satoshi pulled a golden book from what seemed like out of nowhere before he held it out for Cal to see. I'll need a captain for my team. Cal turned from ecstatic to shocked all in a matter of seconds as he watched Satoshi toss the golden book out of the broken window. He stared at Satoshi for a moment, and in one fluid motion, he felt Satoshi's hand pushing him out the window after the book. Satoshi! His heart pounds as he flails his arms and legs mid-fall, and in the blink of an eye, Cal is able to grab a hold of the book.